Hello, this is Pei Zhang with our third presentation for this course. We'll be covering the steps in the translation process. The aim of the section is to provide an overview of the different steps involved in a typical professional translation process. Each of the steps involves different tasks and requires different skills that you will develop and improve as you get involved in the profession. Although producing the target text is the most visible step, there are other tasks without which the whole process would probably fail such as analyzing the needs of the client and planning the project. Depending on the assignment, in professional practice, medical translators will go through some, mainly the first five and the last one, or all of the following steps. Analyzing the needs of the client and planning the project. On receiving an assignment, you should discuss the specifics of the project with the client. Once you have a firm agreement with your client, you should plan the project coordination with other translators if necessary, terminology management, contact with experts in the field if necessary, and so forth. Reading and understanding the source text. It goes without saying that in order to translate a medical text properly, you need to read it thoroughly and have an adequate understanding of it. Comprehension of particular terms is necessary, but of itself is not enough. A broad understanding of the whole text is also required. Networks and hierarchies of terms, conceptual links between paragraphs, conceptual links between sections of the same text, descriptive, narrative, and argumentative structures, overall cause and effect relationships. If you don't have enough background information to understand your source text, you should try reading less specialized text about the same topic and get immersed in it gradually. Compiling a glossary. Glossaries are used to ensure that terminology is consistent internally with the solutions adopted in a particular assignment and externally with the client's norms and preferences. In addition, compiling our own dictionary will allow us to acquire new concepts by means of definitions and to better understand conceptual relationships between different terms. Glossary compilation should be done in such a way as to allow us to retrieve and use those terms and definitions again in the future or to share them online with other translators, hence the convenience of using electronic terminology managers. Drafting the target text. Once you have understood the source text and have compiled the glossary, you are in a comfortable and self-confident position to start drafting the target text be it a full translation, a summarized adaptation, or whatever the client needs. In the first draft, it is important to focus attention on the two most basic aspects of text production, structure and contents. We must consider both the macrostructure of the target text, sections, subsections, moves, flow of information, etc., which may or may not coincide with that of the source text, and the factual information the structure should contain. It is like digging the fountains and erecting the pillars that will support all the other parts of the building. Our aim now is accuracy in bringing to the target text at least the most relevant information contained in the source text and putting it in the right place. We will also deal with most translation problems at this point. Conceptual and formal details will be sorted out later in further drafts in which we will focus on microelements, such as links between sentences, word order, terminological choices, etc. Revising and editing the target text. Once structure and factual information are in place, then we can start revising and editing for conceptual completeness, accuracy, clarity, cohesion, syntax, in-house style, grammar, spelling, punctuation, and consistency in the use of terms, abbreviations, numbers, proper names, etc. When revising and editing, it is important to follow a logical sequence of steps, starting from contents and ending in spelling and punctuation. Proofreading. Once you have revised and edited the target text against the source text and on its own through different drafts, then you can produce a document that should read as an autonomous, finished text. When proofreading, we make sure that the text reads well, paying special attention to punctuation, spelling, quantities, numerical expressions, and so forth. Reviewing the translation by the client. Sometimes, clients may revise the finished translation before it is formatted and printed for publication. Their comments are often valuable and can help us to meet their needs. Formatting. 
Once the text has been fully accepted by the client, it can be formatted in the required format, be it PDF, HTML, PageMaker, and other. The translator is normally expected to be fully conversant with these and other tools. Reviewing the galley. Galley review is carried out when the target text is to be printed and published. Depending on the publisher and or printer, galley review is carried out either internally as one more step of book production or it is commissioned to the translators. In galley review, correct hyphenation, font size, font type, page numbering, and footnote numbering are revised. Sometimes galleys are also reviewed by the clients to ensure that not only the text but also the document will meet their needs. Delivery. Delivering the final document to the client. Finally, the document is produced and delivered to the client in the form agreed, email, FTP, or a CD sent by ordinary post. In the rest of the chapters, we will be looking in greater detail at the most basic steps presented so far, analyzing the needs of your client as far as readership is concerned, reading and understanding the source text, solving translation problems, compiling a glossary, and drafting and revising the target text.